Can we trust Real Real or any other pre-loved luxury platform for that matter? A few months back, I was quite disappointed with my very first purchase from the Real Real. To give you a bit of background here, I wanted to review an Hermes bag, but realized there were many hoops to jump and games to play until Hermes privileges you by selling you one of their bags. I decided not to go that route and possibly save a few hundred dollars. So I checked the pre-loved luxury platforms. I found an Evelyn bag made with the famous Togo leather. That was the perfect piece as I wanted to review a Togo leather bag from the brand. I purchased it and made a teaser video about it. Upon sharing the close-ups of the bag, my Hermes savvy audience was quick to point out the false leather description. They said the leather looked like Clements, not the Togo. I was confused by this claim and even questioned the bag's authenticity at this point. I reached out to Real Real several times to clarify the issue with no luck from the customer service. Then I shared a video of my frustration with this issue and got many angry customers complaining about less than desirable experiences like mine from the same platform. Three hours after publishing my complaint video, I got a call from the Real Real confirming that it was indeed a listing error. The bag was authentic, but the leather was Clements, not Togo, as my audience claimed. They let me return the bag for a full refund, but I lost my confidence in the platform. A few days later, I got an apology email with an invitation to one of the Real Reels authentication centers to show me their process to rebuild that trust. Now, I love the idea of perfectly usable products being traded in secondhand markets. It's a great practice of using things longer, consuming less, and contributing to a sustainable world. But this experience made me realize that the most important pillar holding these businesses up is the trust they can muster in their customers. They had a challenging but essential job of authenticating every item with utmost care as the facilitators of this growing market segment. So the Real Real's invitation after my disappointing experience was a great opportunity for me to explore and share the authentication process behind these platforms with you to shed some light on some of the concerns my audience shared under my video. Let me tell you that my visit to the Real Real Authentication Center in New Jersey was eye-opening. Full disclosure here, I paid for my entire trip and have no benefit from the brand to market their platform. I will reflect on what I have learned as an independent social media journalist I am slowly becoming here. Upon arrival, I have met the marketing and authentication team members in their Port Amboy facility. I was surprised by the size of the warehouse and operations as it was huge with truckloads of merchandise trafficking in and out of this facility. The sheer size of transactions made me realize the importance of their diligence in authenticating those items one more time. As the platform sells many different types of articles from clothing, watches and jewelry to leather goods, I wanted to focus more on the leather side but also listen to the process of authentication for the other item categories. As a leather product is sent to the platform, it arrives at one of the Real Reels authentication centers in US. Then it gets assigned a level of security clearance. The more premium and expensive the brand and the product is, the higher the clearance level. The highest being level 5, for example, a Hermes bag would go through this highest level of clearance First, the bag goes to a human expert on that particular brand. The expert reviews the bag physically and then takes it through an in-house AI system by taking magnified pictures of the materials, logos and hardware. So the ever learning system can compare the images to the database and give its assessment at microscopic levels of detail. In addition, they have a material inspection department with super fancy high-tech equipment. 
which they heavily rely on watches and jewelry category authentications. These machines analyze the material composition of the hardware and compare that to the database for potential counterfeits. As hardware is one of the most complex part of the fakers to copy in high-end leather bags exactly. This material testing step was the most reassuring thing I have seen there. If the human expert's opinion, material test results and the AI's assessment matched, then the item can get an authentic badge and move to the next step. If it was flagged as a potential counterfeit, it may be confiscated or returned to the consigner. They showed me some of the confiscated fake bags used as training or comparison assets and explained the small nuances their human experts or AI caught on that particular bag. A counterfeit was confiscated if it was a repeated offense from the same consigner. If it was the first time from a good standing or a new consigner, it was returned with an inauthentic warning to that consigner. Once a bag is deemed authentic, it moved to the next listing creation step. Other team members fill out the descriptions and other details and put images to list the item for sale. They told me that was the exact point of error in my experience because the listing team overlooked the leather type entry when creating the actual listing. And they said they were already working on that process to prevent further errors of this kind. It was reassuring to see these diligent processes and high-tech equipment at work to build that trust. The authentication matter was not taken as lightly as some of the comments claimed it to be, which was reassuring to me. Upon leaving the facility, I asked myself, do I feel confident that no fake bags can sneak through this fancy system? I couldn't answer this question yet because I still felt like there was a missing piece in this puzzle. I realized I didn't really know how good or bad the fake bags were to assess if they could be identified by Real Real's deliberate efforts. So I set out on a journey to explore the quality of fake bags. This is a question that I received thousands of times, but intentionally avoided so far. Since then, I acquired three different fake luxury bags from very confident counterfeit makers I could find during my travels. Two in Turkey and one in China. All these purchases were super weird encounters at sketchy locations. All vendors claimed that the bags I was getting were identical to the originals. But to my surprise, all of them had quite easy tell signs for a person who has seen many original bags from those brands. To be honest, it was a bit comforting to see that even the allegedly better fakes are not that close to the real products in my experience so far. Now, I know that there are way too many counterfeit luxury bags out there but it seems like a great majority of it has at least one easy clue to separate them from the originals because most of the counterfeiters are cost focused and always cut a few corners which leads to these nuances to give these products away. With these findings, I'm fairly confident that at least one of the three layers of authentication processes at Real Real can identify most of these fakes in the market. But there is a famous term that we all keep hearing these days, and it is super fakes. The counterfeit bags that are allegedly that good, it's impossible to tell them apart from the original. Well, I'm still looking to get my hands on one of those. No matter what contacts I have reached out to, I couldn't find a source. If you know somewhere that I can get one of those, please let me know, because I feel like that aspect is still to explore to complete this investigation. So at this point, my confidence in real real is reestablished to a great extent. The only nuance is that I developed my own fail safe system to keep learning for myself and ensure the results with Entropy's AI software service I signed up for recently. It's a small device that takes a few pictures so that an AI based system can authenticate the bag 
with a money back guaranteed certificate. All this is to keep my eye open, so maybe one day I will catch one of those super fakes to explore here together. And this is what I'm doing for all pre-loved bags. I'll be buying going forward, not only the ones from the real real. After all this research, I gave real real another chance and bought a Louis Vuitton cappuccino bag recently. I inspected the bag myself and ran it through entropy before my thorough dissection and review. This time everything went perfectly. You can watch the entire review video right here. In summary, this initial frustrating experience led to this rabbit hole of learning a lot about pre-love luxury authentication and the fake bag market. Who knew? I feel happier and more confident about my future pre-loved bag purchases, especially from Real Real, as I got to know a few great friends that I trust now. As always, we will keep exploring and sharing all things leather with you all here on this channel. Until next time, stay leather tamed.